right, it's time for happy hour. And joining me this evening, Lona Show producer Jenny Churchill and Michelle Seleski, communications director of GoPack. Hello, ladies. Hi. Thank you for joining me. Let's start with something that's going on in New Jersey. I kind of have mixed mixed feelings about this, but apparently texting and walking is a really big problem, and they're gonna they're gonna clamp down. It's gotten so bad, police in Fort Lee, New Jersey, say they have had enough. Pedestrians aren't watching where they're walking. They're not aware. After more than 20 pedestrian accidents this year, they're cracking down on dangerous walkers with an $85 fine. Now, I agree. Sometimes people can be really annoying because they're not paying attention to where they're going and they run into you. But I mean, you can be distracted by a million different things. You're really going to make people pay $85 for texting while walking? Well, it's interesting because I, I found out right after the show started that they actually, the town is claiming this is untrue and they're just giving out jaywalking citations ah. to people who are texting while jaywalking. However, I have a problem with that story because <laughs> you're not giving out tickets to people who are jaywalking and texting. You're giving out jaywalking tickets to people who are jaywalking. It's already illegal. So then what, are they letting all the other jaywalkers go if they're not texting? I don't get it. It doesn't make any sense to me. Tricky, tricky. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, one of the first things you learn you're growing up is to look both ways before you cross the street you know and so Hopefully. people yeah you would hope but people today you know they're they're texting and looking at twitter and stuff and walking around but i guess they've had a lot of incidents so the police chief took it into his own yeah. his own hands to help save the public but i guess if they have a problem they can go talk to him about it you know but like you said people are listening to music maybe reading a book crossing the street so maybe you should just pay more attention and yes. you know and then if something happens you learn your lesson and in that story, too, there was this app I didn't even know existed where it turns your camera on so while texting, you can see the street in front of you. Probably just That's easier to look cool. up. But I, actually, I like that. I, I had no that. I like idea. to text and walk, so this is why I'm so against this. Anyway, um, let's move on to Ron Paul. So we've been doing stories. A lot of people out there have been talking to him about um, the strategy that he's using to rack up some delegates. Here's him last week. Congressman Paul, when will you endorse Mitt Romney? Well, I'm still thinking about that. Not soon, because I'm still working very hard to maximize the number of delegates. And if you watch the news every weekend, we seem to do a lot better. So today, he came out and said that he is not going to try to compete in any more primaries in any of the states that haven't voted yet. They're still going to try to do what they can to get delegates where they have voted, but no more than new ones. How does, does that change things at all? Not necessarily. I mean, Ron Paul has a very enthusiastic, very loyal group of people who will probably show up anyway, whether he's running or not. And whether you support him or if you don't, he's been out there for a cause. He's very committed to, to his values, to, you know, getting rid of the Fed um, and things like that. So despite winning the nomination or winning a number of delegates, I think he's out there to prove a point, which he will still do and his supporters will still do. And I actually find something interesting from that clip we played. They asked him when he was going to endorse Mitt Romney. I would be really shocked if he endorsed Mitt Romney. I kind of see him endorsing Gary Johnson instead, but maybe I'm wrong. I well, see, there's that whole thing as to whether he and Mitt Romney had some kind of unspoken arrangement because uh, they weren't really lashing out at each other. I think those kind of questions are going to keep keep being asked the whole I'd be, way through. I would be through. very disappointed if he came out and endorsed Mitt Romney. I just want uh, But he's personal. running on the not Republican personal. ticket, after yeah. all. I'd be surprised not, if he actually chair. endorsed anybody. Yeah. That's true. I think, I think that's probably yeah. uh, the more likely case. Should we move on to Peter King? Oh, Peter King. <laughs> Peter, Peter King. Uh, basically, he, you know, he's the Homeland Security chairman. He decided to have all the Muslim radicalization hearings on the Hill, and now he's also looking into the Secret Service scandal. But apparently, he turned down uh, a meeting with the Colombian prostitute that was in the middle of it. This is her. They were full of themselves. There was another crazy guy that will jump up on the bar. Were they shy about asking for sex or were they very direct about it? <laughs> very direct. I will say too direct. Did any of them say that they had done this before? No, but the way they approach us, it seems obvious that they were... I don't buy that he wouldn't really want to meet with her, but here's his reasoning. And he said that while such a meeting and the inevitable circus atmosphere surrounding it would no doubt be of great interest to the media covering this story, a meeting with her is simply not necessary at this time for the committee to conduct a serious and thorough investigation. This 
actually blows my mind. I mean, I, I understand it would be sensational and, you know, she's a prostitute and whatever. This is the one person who was there. She can tell you exactly what happened. And you want to do an investigation about this and not talk to her? That seems Well, they're trying to do investigations to whether this is a more widespread problem within the Secret Service. I don't think that this one story is going to be the whole issue. Sure, and he's coordinating with her attorney, but like you said in his statement, he said he wanted to avoid a circus. It's become a story that he's not meeting with her. If he did decide to meet with her, it'd be that much more of a story. And so he's coordinating with his attorney. She's been out doing a media circuit. She's on the Today Show. She's doing radio shows. She's talking about a book deal. So it's not necessarily that it would be the best thing for this investigation. But, you know, we can leave that to him to decide. It probably doesn't really have anything to do with Homeland Security, for the Homeland Security chairman to have to meet with her, let's be honest. but. I think that'll be kind of a fun story. I'm kind of <laughs> sad he's not doing it. <laughs> All right, guys, I gotta wrap it up, but thank you for joining me this evening.